We'll go ahead and get going. I'll keep my portion short because I know everybody's here to, to get the unveil. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, we're super excited to, uh, for this day to be here. I'd like to thank the city council members, Hendricks, Montney, Kearns for being here, the mayor, uh, elected officials, business leaders throughout the community. This is going to be a team effort, uh, ECHL being the highest level hockey we've ever had. Uh, we'll need to get everybody involved. This will be the best hockey uh, we've seen here. So we're super excited. Uh, I'd like to thank Deputy City Manager Jurgens and Tyus and City Manager Gleason. They've been kind of right, right alongside us, making sure we could get this done, being on the phone with the Hallets. Uh, the Hallets right away were an organization and an ownership group we knew who has been committed to the community in Indy, and they do the same thing here. That's what we needed to make hockey work. Uh, so I'd like to thank the arts and entertainment team as well. Without them the last year, this wouldn't have been possible. Making this arena, getting it back up to what it should be. Kristen Woods, our operations manager, her team have done a great job getting this building clean and, and back to what it should be. So this is the first step to get the arena going as the economic driver it should be. So uh, we're excited to kind of get this show going. So with that being said, Deputy, Deputy City Manager Tyus will come up for a few words. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, for coming. And I got to do this. <laughs> um, really appreciate everybody turning out, all of the elected and all of the business leaders and community folks and community leaders as well. Um, Anthony Mitchell, City Manager Tim Gleason, and I, I, he couldn't be here today, but wanted to send along his sincere thanks to the Hallett family for choosing Bloomington. Um, we know that you didn't have to do that, but, and we appreciate you, you choosing the city of Bloomington. I know that today really is a day to celebrate hockey, and we're over the moon excited about that. But I would be remiss if I didn't take this opportunity to also mention and celebrate a continued return of the arena and the city-run arts and entertainment scene. Today is a big part of what's happening over here in this building and also over at the BCPA. And so I just wanted to say that, yes, today is about hockey, but it's also about a continued growth and improvement in what's happening at the arena. Uh, under the, uh, the leadership of Anthony and his team. Uh, the mayor and council have been very, very clear that it is a priority to, to bring new life to this building, to continue to bring new life to this building and to the BCPA. And we're, like I said, we're over the moon as to where we're headed. Today is a big part of it again, as I said. You know, again, today is about hockey, but we're moving towards a full arena calendar. Um, in the last year, we've had things happening almost every week here in this building and at the BCPA. Um, since October, we've had two sellouts, or close to sellouts since October, which is a big deal for shows in, in this building. The BCPA has a full season plan, and they're trending toward five sellouts during this season. And so we think that's a big deal, and we think that's a sign that things are headed in the right direction. direction. Here's a fun fact for any naysayers who may be out there. In the next month, we're expecting 30,000 people to come through this building for events at, at the arena. Let me say that again. At the arena, we're expecting 30,000 people to come to shows and events in the next 30 days. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I want to probably thank the Hallett family and Larry. Um, you guys made this a seamless uh, negotiation, and that's a hard thing to do when you're negotiating an agreement. So we appreciate, again, you choosing us. We appreciate you making this easy. Um, I want to thank the arts and entertainment team, and I know there are several of you in here, both for putting this event together, but also putting this building in a position that it was a place that people wanted to come and locate their business and their team. A top-notch sports team wanted to come here and locate here. So we want to thank the arts and entertainment team for that. Um, as I said earlier, the city manager set the vision for us. He basically used to say, get this done. And, and that was important. But the other thing I want to mention is that it took a lot to make it happen in terms of, of the back and forth and the conversations. I also want to publicly thank Anthony Nelson and Jeff Jurgens for the work that they did. Um, there, was, there was a lot of back and forth, a lot of conversations, a lot of sort of legal language, et cetera, et cetera. And I want to publicly thank the two of you as well for all the work you did to make this happen. So, I'll shut up now. Uh, I'd like to introduce Mayor Mulambwe, and he'll have a few words as well. Well, he said a few words. We'll see. I have three pages. <laughs> 
good morning, everyone. I, I'd like to uh, thank all of you uh, for being here. Today is a great day. Uh, we have many here, and it's been mentioned before, you know, council members and members of the business community, standing room only. So this is exciting. It lets us know uh, what, uh, you know, the community uh, expects when it comes to uh, hockey and hopes, you know, in terms of hockey. Um, you know, from the time the announcement, the announcement was made, uh, the, the excitement has been palpable, um, you know, and Mr. Hallett and myself were talking about social media uh, earlier. I don't spend a ton of time on social media, but I could see that there were a lot of people who were excited about it, very positive comments. I do find it ironic that the uh, council action on Monday was delayed by icy conditions. <laughs> but we are, this is Illinois, uh, you know, and this is what we do, and we decided that we're going to plow through all of this and, and, and uh, <laughs> all the puns, you know, <laughs> uh, and then we're going to make it happen today. Also ironic, I find that it, you know it's the guy who was born in Africa, you know, who's here talking about ice hockey and, and announcing this. <laughs> Because there's no ice there. <laughs> the last time I ice skated, uh, we had a hockey rink, and then I fell on my head, and that wasn't fun. Um, but seriously, I, I want to thank uh, Hallett Sports and, and Entertainment for choosing Bloomington, like Billy said, uh, and thank everyone here uh, for all the work uh, that you've done to, to make today a reality, particularly the staff, and they've been mentioned earlier. Uh, the fact that Hallett Sports and Entertainment selected Bloomington for its new team is a testament uh, not only to you in the community, who we are, uh, but what all of us are doing every day to make Bloomington the vibrant city that it is. This announcement is especially satisfying given the fact that the arena went totally dark during COVID, um, and three years later, its lights are shining brighter than ever, and thanks to this agreement, uh, this should be, a, uh, should, should be seen as a sign uh, that we're uh, doing something right here in Bloomington. While the arena uh, facilities and our location and the financial terms of the agreement mattered, uh, my understanding is that the Hallett family uh, have said specifically that it was who we are and the work we're doing uh, that made their decision an easier one. And I could feel the, the excitement and the passion from Mr. Hallett when we were talking earlier for Bloomington. And sometimes I, I wonder that you know if we, we kind of take it for granted having been here uh, for so long, but we are a pretty special community and, and we're getting affirmation from people outside the community who are choosing to come here, several businesses uh, so far. We're on page number two. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I would encourage all of you to just kind of look around the room, you know, and see how many people are here and who's represented. That is a, a testimony to uh, what is happening. We're a growing city where private industry is choosing to invest millions of dollars to build and expand here. Bloomington has seen more than $300 million uh, in new investment in the last two years and probably more than half a billion if you think about the last four or five years. We are home to Fortune 500 companies and other leaders in the insurance and uh, agriculture industries. We've got world-class award-winning uh, healthcare organizations, trailblazers in connecting um, residents to companies that started here, uh, right here in 1936, and top-notch transportation firms creating new ways to connect uh, commerce to all of us. Nobody got that, it seems like. No way, company, transportation. Um, simply put, uh, today was built upon a foundation brought to us by State Farm, uh, Country Financial, Growmark, Beer Nuts, AFNI, New Way Transportation, <laughs> and so many others. Uh, if you think about it, uh, Ferrero, uh, is also here. I think one of the representatives from Ferrero is here, so they're the latest uh, comer here in town. You know, the company responsible for bringing us iconic brands like uh, Nutella, Crunch, Baby Ruth, uh, Ra Raisinets, and Tic Tacs uh, chose to build its nor first North American chocolate factory right here in Bloomington, Illinois, so that, that's all fantastic. 
And whether you believe it or not, we heard that the work we are doing to improve the local quality of life outside of fixing streets and patching potholes, people are never happy about streets and potholes. That's just the life of you know, a mayor and a council member, and, and that's okay. We're gonna keep uh, moving forward and, and doing the best we can. And there are also top tier organizations looking for a place to, uh, to expand. Uh, it mattered that we are in the midst of a 20 uh, plus million dollar library renovation and a 13.5 million dollar um, O'Neill Aquatic Center build. And it says something to the outside world that this council uh, is considering a streetscape project that would bring a new look, feel, and energy to downtown Bloomington. So the timing could not be more right to have all of these developments at the same time. Now that the team is almost here, we have council action uh, expected in a couple of hours. Um, they will need us more than ever. So um, I was going to say that I, I want you to encourage your friends, you know, to, to come in. This was meant for a smaller crowd, <laughs> but seeing that we have such a huge crowd, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I don't need to, to remind you of that. I think uh, it looks to me like, uh, you know, the community is fully behind the team. So we're, we're very excited. Uh, so as community leaders, um, I, I, I encourage you to reach out to the Hallett family to offer congratulations and, and ask them what you can do further. We're ready for this phase in Bloomington sports history and can't wait for what the future holds. I, I know my future certainly involves purchasing a uh, Bloomington Da, 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 da. I don't want to see the team yet. <laughs> Jersey. <laughs> and maybe a ceremonial first buck uh, if it does not involve skating to the middle of the <laughs> ring. Because <laughs> otherwise I think we'll need a stretcher for me and a physical therapist on hand. So I want to thank you all very much for coming and let's go Bloomington. Thank you. All right, next we're gonna bring up ECHL Commissioner Ryan Crayland uh, for a few words. All right, thank you, Anthony, and thank you, all of you, for coming out. This is absolutely fantastic turnout. Uh, also, thank you, Mayor and the City of Bloomington and the Hallett family for the opportunity and vision to bring ECHL hockey to Bloomington and back to the state of Illinois. And don't think I didn't notice that ECHL All-Star jersey from 2004, so we're back. <laughs> the partnership between Hallett Sports and the city brings a new opportunity for professional hockey to thrive here in Bloomington. This ownership group has extensive ECHL hockey experience with a very fan-centric approach, creating an environment that locals here in Bloomington will be proud to call their hometown team to be unveiled here shortly. For those of you not familiar with the ECHL, we are development hockey with now 30 teams across North America, but we're more than just exciting hockey. We're a commitment to community, social gathering, and affordable family entertainment. For those of you hockey fans here, you're going to see young talent develop for the NHL and AHL through our affiliations, as each one of our clubs is affiliated with an NHL AHL team. In our 36-year history, over 740 players have gone from the ECHL on to play in the National Hockey League, and eight current NHL head coaches have ECHL experience, as well as countless other assistant coaches, officials, training staff, and front office personnel scattered throughout the NHL and AHL. On the ice, and listen, I've been around a long time, our players' speed and skill has never been better, and you're going to see an exhilarating live experience. However, our biggest impact in Bloomington will likely be off the ice. We take pride in being a community asset in the markets we serve, as each season ECHL teams collectively donate over $4 million to their communities, including Hallett Sports and their decorated history and what they've done in the community and the indie market. Larry McQuarrie, the president of the team, uh, told me this year they've now donated over 40,000 teddy bears through their annual teddy bear cost to local Indianapolis hospitals. Countless hours of volunteer time in the community 
school visits and reading programs, and of course a school day game, which I hope they can bring here to Bloomington. And I see a couple kids down there that played hooky today, so thank you for, for coming. <laughs> and uh, we hope to see you at a school day game uh, in the 24-25 season. As well as additional grassroots initiatives to grow the sport of hockey and the spirit of teamwork here in the community. We also focus on the entertainment aspect of our brand. And so while the hockey is invigorating, we emphasize entertainment, creating an exciting atmosphere at affordable prices with an emphasis on fan participation and player interaction to enhance the entertainment experience. I've had the opportunity to get to know the Hallett family uh, for the past decade. Uh, I remember when Jim came to our office, I guess a little over 10 years ago to launch the expansion uh, indie membership and I can tell you these folks are committed to an excellent product. They focus on that on a daily basis. In that time the president of the Fuel, Larry McQuarrie, has become vice chairman of our league and so I'm excited to see the growth that they can bring to this market as Bloomington will create strong rivalries in our central division many teams only a few hours away and so it's my honor and I'm proud to welcome Bloomington to the ECHL as our 30th team. I'm told that Bloomington is the happiest city in America. <laughs> so today, the happiest city just got happy. Thank you. And at this time, I'd like to welcome the man that makes it all happen, the owner of Hallett Sports, Jim Allen. Well, thank you, Ryan. And uh, when's the game start? <laughs> Gosh, I thought uh, we had a sellout going on here, Dan. Maybe there was a game. But uh, this is really an exciting day. And uh, Ryan and others have mentioned much about what's going on and the excitement that's going on. But I just want to tell you, as, as I get started here, um, you're going to hear from my two sons, uh, Sean and Chad. Uh, Sean and Chad are co-CEOs of House Sports and Entertainment and um, you'll get to meet them and they'll tell you a little bit about what they're gonna be uh, taking care of as well. But you know, we've talked a lot about the city of Bloomington and quite frankly, I'd never been to Bloomington until we got involved with this idea of coming here. And what we did is we came here and we saw a beautiful city. We met some wonderful people that just happened to have a beautiful arena that wasn't being utilized and we said, wow, what an opportunity sitting right here. Um, and what we'd heard about Bloomington, we'd heard about the growth of Bloomington and the mayor and others have mentioned all the um, economic development and all the business that's going here and the new companies that are arriving here. Uh, that's a great story and it makes for a great city. And we want to be part of a great city, um, as the mayor mentioned. Um, so with that, I'm not going to try, Mayor, to rename all those companies, but I want to certainly extend my thanks and appreciation for those companies that have come out today, and we, we appreciate your support as we go forward. You know, when you get into these situations where you're trying to bring in minor league sports, uh, minor league sports only succeeds with the support of the community and with people that know how to get a deal done. And I shared with the, I guess, uh, the mayor of city manager this morning. I said, you know, in, in my career, I feel like nine out of 10 people know how to stop a deal. And one out of 10 knows how to make it go forward. I'll tell you, your people here, your team here in Bloomington know how to get a deal done. And we got a deal done because I think we shared values. We have like-mindedness and much of what we do and how we operate. Um, and quite frankly, uh, I can't take credit for it, but I will tell you um, the feedback that I got was incredible. Each time that Sean and Larry, who you know, may meet here in a little bit, each time they come back from their meetings, they were just more and more encouraged. Um, and we just felt so comfortable with the people that we met and the people that we were gonna be doing business with. We just felt, 
we can do business with these people. We can get a deal done with these people, and we just got to figure that out. And I really give uh, Sean a lot of credit, and Larry Gigerich, who is a consultant with us, um, a lot of credit for being able to get this deal done. Um, so, your people actually motivated us. It was that inspiration. Because this is not all about hockey. And that's been mentioned a number of times. This is about affordable family entertainment. And I will tell you, half of the people that go to a hockey game, and I'm speaking directionally now, half of the people that go to a hockey game are there for a great evening with their children and their grandparents and parents and a great evening to have fun. Uh, and then we have people who are hockey fans. But, <laughs> but I will tell you, it's about the, it's about the entertainment factor. It's about the excitement. It's about the fun. That people are looking for places to have fun. And people are looking for vibrant cities where you can bring vibrant fun to that city. And I hope that's what we are able to bring to you all as we go forward. Um, it's a um, wonderful facility. I said that it's a facility that fits our product. And we're not looking to have 10,000 seats arenas that might show up half empty. We're looking to have a 6,200 seat arena that's full every night. So uh, third, we do have a team that just entered the league before us. They've had, um, uh, up till last week, the, the All-Star the All game, uh, Savannah, Georgia. Savannah, Georgia had played 55 games and they had 53 sellouts in an 8,000 seat, I think, Larry, or I think Ryan, in an 8,000 seat arena. So if it can be done in Savannah, Georgia, watch out. Bloomington, right? Um, so with that, listen, I've said enough. Um, it's a great facility. Um, it's a great town. We've learned a lot about your town, a lot about the companies that are here. Uh, we want to be here, and we want to do a good job. And was mentioned before, we're not just committed to hockey. We're committed to your community, and you'll see our players in the hospitals with the kids. You'll see them at school reading with them. You'll see them doing events in the city. You'll see us involved with charity in a big way. We support charities, as the, as the commissioner mentioned. Uh, we want to be a great partner, but we want it to be your team. We want you to feel ownership. We want you to feel invested. We want you to feel this is our team, and uh, we're just proud to be able to operate here. So God bless you all, and thank you for everything. With that, probably the most exciting part of the program, uh, not that others haven't been exciting, but Chad uh, wants to tell you about what this team is going to look like. Chad? <laughs> oh, yeah, he looks like a hockey guy, doesn't he? <laughs> there you go, buddy. All right, how are you guys doing? Yeah. All right, I get the honor of revealing the name and mascot for the team, which is quite a daunting task, because whenever you go put a name and a logo on a team like this, you try to please everyone, but we know that's impossible, but we really did our best. And to give you a little bit of background about how that process went, uh, we worked with some of the city officials here, gave us some input on what was going on. Then we worked with the design agency. We came up with about 50 different names all over the board, and we sat down and we picked what we thought would fit well. And our goal was to do something that really fit the city well as far as who they are and also the history of the city. So, when we come to the name, you're, uh, we really had a reference towards the prairie landscape and the history of Bloomington. Then when we move into the logo, we expanded on that, and uh, there's a nod towards Abraham Lincoln, who, uh, you guys know the history probably better than me, but he's from not too far away from here, but as I was told, he predominantly did a lot of his work here before his presidency. And I also heard that it was a Bloomington resident that uh, really convinced him to run for president. So there's a little nod to him in the logo. We have, uh, you're going to see a little nod towards, or actually you're going to see the state line with the star for Bloomington in the logo. 
And also we had a reference towards Route 66. We had to put that in there, so that's in the logo. Sounds pretty busy, but we got one of these. And then if you look at the character's beard really closely, you're going to notice he has a little lightning bolt, and that's in reference towards the rolling thunderstorms that come through the prairie. So um, we created it in The really cool thing was the guy who created it was a native from Bloomington. So that lead designer, he was so excited to do this, and I think it really shows in the work he did. But that's enough talk. It's time to unveil, and I'm going to introduce your 2425 Bloomington. Did I take these off? Bloomington Bison. So once again, I just want to thank you guys, and I just real quick, I'm, I'm personally really excited to be here. I've never been to Bloomington myself either, but uh, we got invited to come down, and I, I met with Anthony and Billy, and uh, their passion and love for the city just showed, like Billy, the smile on his face and his excitement about this place. He got me energized. We left, I'm like, I've I got to do something with these guys. and. Uh, on the way home, we're like, we really want to get this done, and I'm really happy we got it done. I'm happy to be part of the community, and I want to get involved, and uh, hope you like the name and team, and uh, look forward to starting next season. With that being said, I'm going to invite my brother Sean up. He really uh, took, took the point, or he will be really the main point person. He'll discuss what's going on, and he'll share uh, some more details of what is to come. All right, thank, thank you guys. Okay, thank you, Chad, and uh, we're, we're coming to a quick end here, but uh, um, before, uh, before I continue, I'm going to get into some of the semantics, but uh, my, my notes are a little short now. <laughs> uh, before we get into the semantics, um, we're going to present some merchandise to the mayor. Do you, can you bring that up here? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, so, uh, just so everyone knows, at the conclusion of uh, my remarks and the questions here, we do have some uh, merchandise off to the side. Unfortunately, we, we don't have enough for this large of a crowd, but anyone who works for the city, works for the facility, works for the city, the city council members, please uh, pick up some merchandise at that table. And anyone uh, from the media here today, uh, you can pick up some merchandise for that table. Before you all run to the table and disregard my remarks here, there's plenty over there for you, so uh, we'll do that uh, at the conclusion of my remarks. Um, so, not only am I co-CEO of House Sports and Entertainment with my brother Chad, but I'm also going to be the interim team president and CEO. So um, uh, I will be uh, traveling back and forth to Bloomington. Uh, either I'll, I'll get a, a place to stay here, or I'll be, I'll be in a hotel. But we just want to make sure we get this off to the right start. And uh, we want this to be locally operated, but on the other hand, we don't want to be hands-off ownership. So with that said, um, I'd like to share with you all, uh, first of all, what an amazing turnout here today. I mean, I, I'd call this our first sellout. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to share with you just some of the excitement we've had in the last week. We announced last Tuesday that we were bringing professional hockey back to Blo or not back to, back to Illinois, but the professional hockey to Bloomington. And you know what? There was no website, there was no name, there was no contact info. Well, the amount of people who have found my phone number, my father's <laughs> phone number, my brother's phone number, I, the, the commissioner has told me, they, you know, for the smaller size market this is, he was kind of surprised at the amount of people that were contacting the league office. 
So there's a lot of resumes in all their inboxes. Um, there's a lot of people that have reached out about partnership opportunities. There's been a lot of uh, inquiries about how people can just support us. None of those have been responded to. <laughs> so today, with the announcement of, uh, of the team name, we have a, we have a uh, team website, BloomingtonBisonHockey.com. And if you go to that website, we're going to start trying to collect all this information all over again. And I, I do have all those emails to anybody here or anyone listening that sent an email. I do have all those resumes. I do have all those emails. And, and we will try to get in touch with you. But you know what? What we're going to do is, is the Indy Fuel Organization, they have, they, they have what they need to do in Indianapolis. Um, this is going to be a locally operated team. So we're looking to hire here locally. Um, we do have our first employee, uh, Jeff uh, we Weisinger. Are you here? Oh, there's Jeff back there. Okay, he's going to be our CFO. Okay, so as of right now, it's just uh, it's just myself and Jeff. So I would encourage you to go to the website. Um, you can see there about employment opportunities. You can inquire about sponsorship opportunities. Um, we we have a ticketing page up. Okay, uh, some some quick uh, some quick questions about tickets. There's some been some questions about what the price point around uh, this product is. Uh, tickets are going to be between twenty and thirty six dollars. Uh, but if you go to our website today, um, uh, well, here I'm going to get into the order of events and kind of lay out a, lay out a game plan, so to speak. So the first order of event is we're starting our season ticket drive right now. Okay, it starts this moment. Um, if you go to our ticketing page, uh, we have season tickets for sale. Um, those uh, season ticket holders, that is, the, that is the base of our, that is the foundation of our team. Um, that's, uh, the, that's, uh, those, are the, those are our fans that want to get in on the ground floor. Those are the fans that, you know, obviously uh, we treat everyone equal, but those are the fans that do get the most benefits. Uh, those are also the fans that are, are going to get the best deal here going in. Uh, right now, if you go to our website, season tickets are six ninety nine for pretty well any any seat in the house. That's under twenty dollars. So we want to make sure that we get this thing off to a fast start and we start building a season ticket base right from the get go. So um, I, I I I would expect by the time this conference is over, we would already have our few our first few deposits because the order those deposits come in is the order that you choose your seats in. Um, so that's uh, that's our first uh, that's our first order of events. Uh, our second is is we need to set up an office. So we've leased some space here at uh, at uh, Washington and Roosevelt, just across the street. Uh, we have um, uh, we have two floors. An ECHL front office is upwards of 20 people. Okay, so it's a little bit larger than some of you are used to in the past with some of these other teams. So we're looking to fill those roles. Um, Jeff and I uh, are going to be busy here in the next couple of weeks, just getting that, getting furniture in, getting phone system in, getting computers in. So again, as all those inquiries and all those emails come in, just just give us a couple of weeks to get set up and uh, and get through that and, and and get our first few key employees hired. Uh, after we have that office set up. Um, we're, we're going to be looking to make some key hires. Uh, we, we're, we're looking for people in, in ticketing and game operations, uh, uh, somebody to sell sponsorships and partnership opportunities. So um, we, we, I, I probably already have enough resumes to hire those people, but I, I, I imagine once this website's up and available and uh, people now have a line of communication with us that uh, we will, uh, we, we'll see a lot more interest in those jobs. And then finally, um, finally, uh, within a few weeks, we have that office open. We have the first few key hires open. We're just going to hit the ground running, and we're going to be out in the community talking to business leaders, um, talking to local companies about how they can get involved with the team, and uh, answering questions and uh, continuing our season ticket draft. So, uh, with that said, um, I, I'm going to I'm going to take any questions you may have, and then uh, and then we'll move forward from there. Yes. Yeah, so uh, this is much similar to the situation we faced in Indianapolis 10 years ago. Um, when we brought, decided to bring ECHL hockey to Indianapolis, there had been four or five teams that had previously come and go uh, since 1930. Um, and uh, basically, um, you know what, opportunity only presents itself where others have failed. Um, if, if there were no failures, there would be no opportunity because all the opportunities would be taken. 
you know, the level of investment of an ECHL team, I've already touched on some of the things, the amount of staff we're going to have involved. <coughs> Pardon me, I am re recovering from cold. Uh, the, the number of front office we have involved to the investment in the team, just the, just the investment to get this team off the ground. Um, it is a more significant investment than what's been made here in the past. We do have a game plan that, you know, although uh, Bloomington's a unique market, um, we do have a game plan we're going to take from Indy, how we unveiled that team. And I'll tell you what, uh, there were a lot of naysayers in Indianapolis. But you, you, you know what? If you, if, if, it's not about hockey. Okay, uh, it's obvious that there's a hockey community here. I mean, I, I see it, right? There's a hockey shop in our building called Johnston's that's been in business since 1929. And I met a gentleman there yesterday who came from 60 miles away to get hockey equipment for his son. Okay, so if they're willing to travel 60 miles to sharpen their skates and get a, uh, and get some hockey equipment, I mean, there's no question that there's a hockey community here, so it's not about hockey. Uh, what we're committed to is, is I think you're going to see the difference in not only the level of hockey, as Ryan touched on, but when it comes to the game day entertainment, the music, the food, uh, the, the tunnel we buy, the blimp we buy, just the amount of investment we're willing to make to put on a good show, I think... People are going to resonate with the difference. And then what happens is, is you're always going to have that core hockey group that will come out and watch a hockey game. But then you start getting people that, as my father alluded to, they're not there for the hockey. They're just there for the entertainment. Yeah, so um, uh, the ECHL does have, a, we, we, we won't be the only owner in the league that has two franchises. Uh, there are actually three other owners that have two, two franchises, and they do have uh, rules in place, uh, so there is no conflicts of interest. Uh, those rules are the two teams aren't allowed to trade with one another, and they're not allowed to have a player that, um, they're not allowed to have a player that plays on both teams within one year. So that's the most obvious. And then it comes down to, you know what, they're both going to have, uh, again, I've alluded to, there's going to be no shared staff between the two teams, aside from myself. Um, they're going to have their own hockey operations and their own coach. And at, at, at the end of the day, uh, they're going to have their own affiliations. <coughs> so we are affiliated with the Chicago Blackhawks in, um, in Indianapolis. Uh, we're not prepared to say today who we're going to be affiliated with here in, uh, here in Bloomington. But I can tell you that from a separate affiliation to a separate hockey operation staff to the rules that the ECHL has in place about dual ownership, uh, there, there will be no no conflict. Uh, there will be no conflict that's present. Sure, so I love it. <laughs> I don't think ta I don't think the Indy Fuel has asked taxpayer. I mean, again, that would be a question for the city to answer. But I don't think uh, I don't think the Bloomington Bison have asked taxpayers for anything. This facility was already here before we came here. Um, we haven't asked the city to do anything to the arena for us to move in. In fact, we'll be doing some improvements to the arena, to our locker room, to our team shop, to our office space across the street. So we're actually the ones making the investment. And you know what? I don't think it's no secret. I think I can share it here today. An expansion fee is $2 million. So if you take the $2 million and you take, uh, you know, three quarters of a million dollars worth of lines of credit we have to put in place for workers' compensation in case there's players' injuries, and then you take a million dollars working capital to get this business off the ground. Uh, this is a $4 million investment, somewhere in the neighborhood of a $4 million investment to come here to Bloomington. So, you know, if anything, I would say that we probably have more on the line than what the city has on the line. <laughs> Well, um, uh, I think uh, we're going to start with our season ticket drive, and we're going to measure success on uh, how we can uh, get that base off the ground. And uh, I think it starts from there. I mean, uh, you know, it um, uh, much like in Indianapolis, uh, it was a building process. So I don't think we would judge success after two or three years, right? We're very long-term uh, minded. Our agreement with the city is 20 years. Okay, it does have uh, it, it does renew every five years, but that's just the way we think. Because to build a business, right? I mean, 
we don't have a five-year time, uh, five time horizon. We have a 20-year time horizon. So that's very similar to the lease we had in Fishers, uh, the new facility we're moving in, and that's very similar to the lease we had at the Coliseum on the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Uh, this is a long-term plan. So I don't, I, I don't think we'll be basing it on two, three years. I think success will be measured over 10 years like it is in Indianapolis. We're going to have a record amount of sellouts this year in Indianapolis. And let me say, when we started 10 years ago, we face many of the same skepticism that we're probably facing here today is, well, why are you different? And what makes you different? And why are you different from the two previous teams that have been here? You know what? I haven't done, dug very deeply into why hockey hasn't succeeded here. But what I know is, is nobody's made the level of investment that we're making here today. Yeah, so th I, I mean, this springs into all kinds of things. Obviously, we've got to start somewhere, but um, in Indianapolis, uh, what it's grown into is it started with the Indy Fuel, and then it grew into we purchased a, a uh, youth ice rink um, in, in Fishers, a suburb of Indianapolis, and we, we did a renovation and it's called the fuel tank at Fishers. And then we had the junior fuel, which I think we grew from, from three, 400 uh, youth players to 1,300, which is one of the largest youth organizations in the country. Um, from there, uh, we made an announcement recently that we're bringing an indoor football league to the arena. So, you know, uh, there's all kinds of opportunity here. I, I, I'm not gonna delve into what may happen, but yes, the hockey team is a platform to do much more. I, I, I don't know if I know it as well as everyone else, but uh, uh, sure. <laughs> Obviously, we have the reference to A with the mirror and the hat, and um, uh, we have the uh, Route 66 sign here. Yes. Um, so maybe um, Larry McQuarrie, do you want to come help me? <laughs> Uh, Larry is the president of the Indy Fuel. He's just here today to help us launch the team, but he was involved with the advertising agency. I know we have the reference to, uh, obviously, Abraham Lincoln with the beard and the top hat. Um, we have the Route 66 sign. We have the, the state of Illinois, right? Um, the B is the bison. Uh, we have a lightning bolt here, which my brother referenced, was a, a reference to the rolling thunderstorms across the, the prairies. Um, is there anything I'm missing here, Larry? No, that pretty much covered it. Chad did a nice job explaining it, and, and he's kind of got that mean look to him very take on the, on the world. So. Yes, but there is a second version of him without... The um, uh, yes, there's going to be a lot of announcements. There's going to be our mascot, our mascot name. I know lots of people want to see what this looks like on a jersey. Um, I think the city, the, the city accidentally had a copy of our jerseys and they wanted to disclose them today. We're like, no, that's for another day. <laughs> but uh, the, you're, you're going to see a lot of announcements here over the uh, over uh, over the course of uh, the next few months, and we have all our social media channels up. Uh, it is a, uh, 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 our Facebook is Bloomington Bison, Correct. Uh, Instagram is Bison Hockey ECHL, um, Twitter is Bison Hockey ECHL, yeah. okay, and the website is Bloomington Hockey, uh, BloomingtonBisonHockey.com. Yes, sir. Sean, do you have a timeline on an affiliation announcement? Uh, yeah, so um, there's, there's 32 NHL teams, there's 32 AHL teams. Uh, we're currently at 28, uh, 28 uh, ECHL teams with two coming into the league next year, being Bloomington and Lake Tahoe. So obviously there's some teams that are unaffiliated. Um, and that's something that will probably be announced in the next couple months. I mean, that's something that's not really necessary till the end of the season. We're kind of letting everybody obviously has their... Uh, their hockey operations in place this year. So I think as we come to the end of the season and we start talking to coaches, potential coaches, I think that'll come out of the word work. I'd expect an announcement on that probably by, uh, you know, probably by May. What, what is yeah. the, oh, sorry. Oh, yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, what is the roster makeup going to be for the Bison? You know, how much is going to be with the affiliate and how much is going to be free signing? Yeah, so in our league, um, uh, you know, it differs from team to team, depending how heavily invested the parent wants to get involved. But generally, a third of the team 
is um, is uh, from uh, is on uh, is from your affiliate is assigned from your affiliate. A third of the team is uh, kids coming out of university, or I shouldn't say kids, I apologize, young men coming out of university, right? Um, and a third of the team is guys that are, you know, they're, they're making a living in the league. I mean, guys do make a living in the league. They enjoy the sport of hockey. They're always trying to make it to the next level. So they're, they're going back and forth. They may have played in the AHL and they came down to the ASL. So a third are, are, are young men coming out of university. A third guys kind of trying to... Uh, uh, hang on to the dream of making it big inside our league and a third from our affiliate. Yes, sir. So I have a question. Um, so there already is a youth hockey organization here. Yes. What's your connection going to be to that and how will that affect our ice time and things like that? Oh, well, I don't... Um, so... I, we've had no discussion yet with it, but uh, I, we, we just want to be involved if they want us involved, right? Um, so I don't think uh, it should affect your ice time. From the matter of uh, again, I don't know what the scheduling is, so we'd have to discuss that with the we'd have to discuss that with the with, with the arena manager. But uh, no, it's our it's our goal just to practice here in the mornings, which would be uh, when the when the kids are in school, and uh, to have our games in the evenings. Uh, so I, I don't imagine it would have much effect. But our involvement will be. Listen, first and foremost, we want to launch an ECHL team. So we may not even be involved in, for the, in the first season. But as we move on, we, we'd love to allow them to take on our name and logo. We have the junior, fuel in, uh, the junior Fuel in Indianapolis. We'd love for it to be the Junior Bison, if they so desire. It's, 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 their, it's their youth program. But uh, however we can help, we'd like to grow the program. And like we did in Indianapolis, we, we got involved with the youth arena. I, I mean, there's always the possibility of us helping to... Add another sheet of ice here. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any concerns about attendance? I guess per contract, you have to have an average attendance of 2,200. I guess, uh, how do you pl plan to promote the team? And then what happens if you don't reach that average attendance? Um, well, I, I, I guess uh, going into any business, you could, uh, you, you have uh, what uh, the worst case scenario is. But we feel the 2,200 certainly isn't a goal. It's more of a... Um, uh, it's more of a uh, of uh, a minimum that we would expect. Uh, we expect to be higher than 2,200, just based on uh, th this league has a different following um, than than the other leagues. And for those, there's people in this room that are familiar with the league, and there's some that aren't, so so they wouldn't know. But I've been following the chatter on Reddit and on Facebook and in hockey forums. And there's a lot of people that are excited about this. There's people from surrounding communities like Peoria, Springfield, uh, Champaign. They're saying I've already seen them say online that they want to come to a to. Well, they didn't know it was the Bloomington Bison, but they want to come to the Blooming to, to a Bloomington game. So, you know, in Indianapolis, we get we, we draw fans from upwards of an hour away from our facility. So, you know, um, I'm just going to stay positive and, and say that uh, uh, the 2200 was put in there as kind of a worst case scenario, but just based on uh, what's happening in our league and how our league has matured over the last 10 years, looking at the launch of some other teams, uh, even though this is a little bit smaller market. It's a hockey-centric market, and it's certainly not the smallest market in the ECHL. I, I'm confident we can do much better than that. Yes, sir. I uh, wanted to touch on the youth hockey thing a little bit. Uh, my son, was uh, he played early on whenever we had the Prairie Thunder here, and I feel that uh, it was just as good for him to come to them games and watch them. He grew by that, you know. We came to all the we were season ticket holders. And... Uh, feel it was a privilege to skate on this ice at that time and this arena was built not for youth hockey it was built for a pro hockey team. No. and uh yeah that's that's my there's, there's, there's a rink over there mm, for youth hockey, and they can come and mingle and as much to learn here in the seats watching the pro team play as there is to be on the ice so far. Well, well thank you and i just you made me think of a couple things there when you talk about how we'll be involved in youth hockey um, the junior fuel run the 50 50 raffle at uh, the fuel games in indianapolis i think that contributes how much does that contribute a year larry uh, over a million 
far as how much contribution? Uh, to the junior fair? Oh, we've oh, contributed over a million dollars, but how much does the 50-50 contribute on an annual basis to the to over the junior field? Over 75,000, okay, uh, it raises. Um, we, 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 have a, we have a players skate out on the ice to open the game, and they always enjoy that. So, no, the, we're going to be involved with youth hockey. I'm going to take two more questions, and then, of course, afterwards, we're all available to... Um, to answer questions on the side. So I, one thing to let you know, over yes. 20 people have already signed up for seniors. Oh. 20 separate accounts have signed up for seniors. Okay. 20, 20 accounts, so that's more than 20 tickets. Yeah, so we could get 100 tickets sold already. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take two more questions, and then, and, and then we're going to break. Do you have a schedule you know, when the first game Yeah, the schedule will uh, The season is from October to uh, through April. And then, of course, you have the playoffs, which can go through the first week of June. Um, the schedule is going to be released here in uh, May, Larry? Yeah. May, yes, May. <laughs> okay, one more question, and then we're going to break. And no more questions? Okay, good, then we've got them all in. Okay, as I said, um, uh, the, anyone that works for the city, counselors, uh, the facility, any fire or, or police that are here, you, you can uh, you're free to get some merchandise at the side, the media as well, and we'll be available to answer questions on the side. Thank you.